our camera and a lot of our equipment got stolen on the bus. Él le preguntó y le dijo, ¿me lo puede ayudar? Y se fueron, se vieron así. This is a travel video that we never expected to make. And this entire experience and all the footage that we have from it is stuff that we haven't even unpacked Kevin yet. Our goal of this video isn't for us to make you feel bad for us or be like, oh, poor us, like this happened to us. It really is just to like educate and help people so that this doesn't happen to them. Like we just want to say our story, what happened and kind of leave it at that. And if you stick around to the end of the video, we'll let you know what we're doing differently and how you can avoid this happening to you. But before we get into what actually happened, we should probably give you some backstory on us. We met in 2021 while we were both traveling and we wanted to live life on our terms. We wanted to travel. We wanted to make our own money and see the world. So after about a year of full-time traveling and creating YouTube videos, we decided that we wanted to invest in a brand new camera in Bangkok, Thailand, like the day before we left. And so after we traveled with the camera, like shot some epic adventures in Europe, we decided that we really wanted to go backpacking in South America. We love like outdoor adventures and that's how we ended up in Ecuador. And we've traveled to like 35 countries at this point. We're not just like these clumsy travelers who were traveling to Ecuador with not a clue of what could happen. Like it was just a lapse of judgment. And Everybody makes mistakes, even people like us that have traveled to the ends of the world. So part of our South America trip is a trekking route called the Kilatoa Loop, which is about a three day backpacking trip through a very remote region of the Andes in Ecuador. You pretty much start in the middle of nowhere and each town that you stop in on the way is just a little village in the top of the mountains. We started in a town called Laracunga and we needed to be in Sigchos in order to start the trek. It is a super, super local bus. And if you miss it, you're probably not gonna make it to your destination at the end of the day. So we were super stressed getting into the back of a cab, not knowing if we were gonna get on the bus in time. Always in a rush. <laughs> we have five minutes to make our bus. We didn't, honestly didn't even know where we were going because everything was so confusing, like where the local buses are, which one to get on, like how to buy a ticket, like it can be very confusing. Kind of got dropped off far away from like the bus depot. And so we start running because the bus is supposed to be like 8 a.m. and it's like 8.05. So we're like running through the street of this very local town. I'm and like yelling at bus drivers, like, are you my bus? Are you my bus? Like, we're like, was sick chose, sick chose, like who's going to sick chose? And it just looks so stupid, you know, just running through. Um, with our huge backpacks. The camera's in the bag at this point. Yeah, so I'm filming all of this on my iPhone. I decided that the camera was probably safest in my backpacking bag, um, which obviously didn't end up being the case. So anyway, we get to the bus depot and somehow someone points to the right bus. We're like getting on, we're rushing in, and we kind of feel like a sense of like relief because like there's tons of space on the bus. Um, they haven't left yet. There's even like a policeman like at the very back. It was essentially like a sigh of relief the second that we got on that bus and realized that we were going to make it to our starting point on time. And so at that moment, we kind of like had all of that chaos to that point. And with that like relaxing of sitting down on the bus was kind of where we switched off. Whenever we both sat down, like Blake had his own seat, I had my own seat. I'm gonna put my bag down. Maybe 30 minutes into the bus, we sit together. We're watching our bags. You know, I'm not, I'm not too worried at this point. We knew that as long as nobody like went behind us, since we were the last people on the bus, that there was no risk. The bus ride from Latakunga to Sigchos goes through this mountain countryside where most of the people on the bus are actually farmers that then get off the bus, not at stops, but literally at their fields. So just imagine it being just completely beautiful countryside on this dirt bumpy road. It was honestly a very enjoyable ride and super, super beautiful. And what we thought was going to be like the perfect introduction to our hiking days. We got to the point where we started seeing signs for Sikh Chos and we didn't really think anything other than, okay, it's time to start this hike. 
we eventually got off the bus at the bus stop in Sikchos and there was a couple things that we had to do before we actually started the hike. We ended up going to a pharmacy, we went to a little store to get some snacks since we really didn't have all of the supplies that we needed to complete the loop and this was probably the last town that we'd get that had a little bit more selection of things that we would need to do this. To the best of our knowledge, the camera was in the backpack. So we get to the point where we're about to start the loop and it's time to take out the camera and start recording. And I open up the top of my bag and that's where I couldn't find what I was looking for. I remember Blake like, you know, getting it out and he's on the ground and he's kind of rummaging through it, hasn't said anything. And he's like, like it's gone Ellie. And I was like, what? And he was like, the camera's gone. There's no way. Like, there's just no way. We were watching the whole, the bags, like instantly goosebumps. I'm like throwing things out on the ground. I'm looking for it. And like, it becomes pretty clear to me that there is no camera in the bag. And I have no idea what else is gone at this point. I'm just thinking like, can we go back? Can we try to do something? Can we try to pay him off? Can we try to find someone that might know something? Like we want, like I would pay a lot of money to have it back today. I would try to find him and be like, I don't care if you took it. Like. I just want it back, like, I don't know. I'm just thinking like, what can I do right now? We're literally right here. I need to try to do something right now. Obviously there's things I can do like later, like trying to get money back. But right now, like physically having the camera was the only thing that I cared about. And I wasn't gonna do like anything in my power to try to get it back. Our plan is to start running back to the bus. Like where the bus left us, like, is it still there? Can we follow the bus? Our camera, our camera, and a lot of our equipment got stolen on the bus. We know that bus, we know that things get stolen, but we were watching our bags the whole time. Stupid, F dumb. Now, trekking gone bad, we might not even get there today. We're gonna have to track this camera down. We basically thought that since the bags are next to us, the only way that they could have been stolen from is if someone went behind them and somehow got into them from behind or like under the or seat. underneath the seat from behind without us really recognizing it happened. And the only person on the bus that went behind us in the entire two hour trip was the guy that was working with the bus driver, the guy that was taking the tickets, the guy that was what I thought was making sure that people were safe. Yeah, like on the bus. I was, I trusted him. So when he went behind us, I never questioned it. Yeah. But then when we found out the camera was gone, we thought that if we could get back to the bus, clearly he's still going to be on there. There was a chance that the camera could still be on the bus. So I eventually ran into some cops. Me and Ellie got in the back of the car with the cops, and they drove us to the bus depot. <laughs> which was the point where Ellie started talking to the cops in Spanish, asking them, can you help us? I'm begging them, begging them to help, and they're not helping. Like, they do not want to. And so I basically tell them the price of the camera. To be honest, like, that was a huge mistake, but I told them how much the camera is worth because I wanted them to care. After I said that, they were kind of were like, okay, this is serious. They told us they would try their hardest. We got in the back of the cop car. This is the craziest day. It was supposed to be a nice trek to our first hotel. It's crazy how your life can change in a matter of minutes. And we're chasing down this bus with the sirens on. It was, it was a very slim chance that we were gonna catch up to it. Like no matter like how slim the chance was that we would find the bus, that we would get on the bus, that we would find the camera, it was and so that we slim. would end the day with the camera in our hands. Like, there, like that was like such a slim chance. But if we didn't do everything we possibly could, I, like, I just wouldn't be able to live with myself. Like, I remember, like, during the time when we were in the back of the cop car, like, Blake and I really started crying. There was a point where, like, I felt really angry that this happened, and honestly, I felt very angry at Blake for like not being more like careful with the camera, but like. Our bags were right next to each other. My bag had our camera and some other gear in it, but Ellie's bag had 
our GoPros, our drone, and other stuff too. At that point, it was like, it could have happened to either one of our bags. Yeah. Probably whichever one he opened first. So we're in the back of this cop car, like racing through the forest and these like hills and mountains. And the cops are like stopping cars, stopping other buses going the other way, saying, hey, have you seen this bus? How far ahead is it? And they're like, oh, it's 20 minutes ahead. Oh, it's 15 minutes ahead. Oh, it's five minutes ahead. We sort of kind of be hopeful that we would reach the bus. We now just passed the car that said that he just saw the bus. And like my adrenaline is like going through the roof like well, we're gonna reach this bus right now all of a sudden like it's there it's the bus is in front of us the right number on the back of the bus that's the bus that we were on this is where like something like sort of weird happened and like I still can't really explain it Remember, we're like locked in the back of a cop car. When you get put in the back of a cop car, you cannot open that door. And the cop in the passenger seat gets out and gets on the bus, and then we drive away. Yeah, they're not letting us out. So there was a point in time where the cop knew the whole situation, knew the cost of our camera, and knew that we weren't on the bus to be able to talk to the people that we thought stole the camera. We drive up a little way on the road, and the cop car and the bus then pull up to us. We were finally let out of the car, and our first instinct was to jump on the bus. Yeah, I was trying not to make a scene, but like the we scene- We were making a scene. Yeah, like the like, scene was already made. We just searched where we could see. But it was obviously crazy that the, the cops even let us go on the bus to do what we did. There was like no supervision. Like I was just in the bus ripping yeah, stuff apart. Yeah, like that would never happen in the US obviously, but it was just kind of manic. Like it was just like yeah. us, like Las Hail Mary. Like if we're gonna find this camera, it's right now. I was talking with the driver, the assistant, and one of the cops outside of the bus. I was just straight up accusing them to see how they would react. I could read their faces when I was accusing them and like there was something very off about the whole they situation. They looked so guilty. And so I was pleading with them like, please, please, will you just give me back the camera? And the assistant made eye contact with the driver as if to tell him, should I give him back their camera or not? Kind of like they were looking at each other to be like, should we tell him? Should it we was do so it? Ob it was so blatantly obvious in the moment and like... The cop you literally can... said, like, he saw that. <laughs> We also have no idea what that cop was talking to him about when when he got on the bus before us. Bus. After I saw that interaction, like I had no remorse and no care for the yeah. lengths that I needed to go to feel like I was good and had searched that bus to my best ability. Yeah, it was a fever dream. I have no idea how long that interaction lasted, but it lasted long enough to the point where we started feeling guilty. We started feeling guilty for accusing these people of stealing from us, and we felt guilty for making these local people wait for us while we rummaged through like their belongings, essentially. At the very end of all of those interactions, I basically apologized in this like crazy guilt that I felt, and I shook the hands of both the guys that may or may not have stolen our camera. And now, still to this day, I have no idea if it was them or if it was somebody else or where it is. Like We have no idea what actually happened that day. All we know is that we left there feeling like guilty that we even tried. We get back on the, in the cop car and they start driving us back to Sikchos. We get back, they drop us off in the town where it all started and we're kind of asking them like, where can we submit a police report? They, where? they could not help us. They didn't want there to There was come, no police like, station we can go to. There was no form we could sign. There was no badge number that we could take. We finally get like the police report submitted online in an, a random internet cafe. You know, did a police report, which is what we have here. These cute little girls from a store helped us and now we're waiting at this like government office to get it stamped because at this point we know that it's very very unlikely to find the camera but we do have insurance. And so we leave this judicial office you know honestly like just so pissed because we've come through this whole day and honestly still feel like we're right at the start. We didn't have a piece of paper that told us what happened to us was real. We essentially decided that we needed to continue the loop without hiking at this point. We had to take a truck all the way to the next location. Remember, these are super rural roads, so it's very hard to get from place to place here. Yeah, we're I... genuinely staying in like one of the most beautiful locations on this loop and the entire time we just had to keep telling people our story. We just couldn't have like a normal conversation with somebody. Like it was all that was on our mind. They're like, wow, why didn't you hike today? 
well, we didn't hike today because this thing happened to us. Yeah. It was it was really devastating. It was really hard because we wanted to enjoy the place, but our spirits were so down. It was so, so low. The next day comes around and we're supposed to hike like 10 miles to our next spot. We had to go back to seek Chos to the same guy that wasn't there the day before to make sure that he could sign that document so that we had the possibility of claiming insurance. So we ended up getting that document signed in Sieg Chos before we actually went to like this super bittersweet moment at the end of the Kilatolo Loop, which is the Kilatolo Crater, which is like absolutely beautiful. The color of the water, the clouds coming into the crater. Yeah. And like we even had like a little puppy with us. Like yeah. it was just, we were trying to be happy and let ourselves en enjoy the Kilatoa Crater for, for just a moment. <laughs> So cute. But I feel like in that moment, Blake gets an email and I could see it in his face, like completely just pale. I had bought insurance for this trip to South America, specifically for the trip to South America. They denied the claim outright because there was a waiting period of a month before the plan even went into effect. We had no recourse from the insurance policy that I bought. We left the Kilatoa crater and had to get on another local bus in Ecuador. I was terrified. This time we both put our bags on our lap, but it almost felt pointless because yeah. the one thing that we didn't want stolen was the camera and that already happened. So like, take it all. Like I, th I just felt so like, yeah. obviously I'm still gonna put the bag on my lap, but it just felt so pointless. There was a moment where we both like came to this recognition and reconciliation of just sort of like, like genuine appreciation and thankfulness that you know, we weren't held up at gunpoint or knife point. We weren't beaten up. There are so many worse things that could have happened to us. Like we still had our health. We still had each other. And we were really considering in that moment if we were going to continue with the South America trip. I remember looking at Ellie. I said to her something along the lines of, you know, if we were to go home from South America right now, we would regret it. Whoever that person was that like stole our camera, we'd let them win. Yeah, they stole like, more I'm than not just gonna the let them win. If we... Yeah, they can't steal my happiness. They can take my camera, whatever. Yeah. But they're not gonna steal my happiness and they're not gonna ruin, you know, our backpacking trip in South America. There was a sliver of like hope and goodness that came back. We had just filmed like one of the most incredible experiences of our lives in Cotopaxi National Park. And I had every single second of yeah, footage, every picture nothing. backed up. I literally think the last picture I took on that camera was of a llama. We make it back to Latacunga where we started, you know, before we got on the bus. We really couldn't do anything but like check Facebook Marketplace constantly. Yeah. Showed up. Like the next couple of weeks, every single day, part of what I did every single day was check in Quito, Ecuador or in Latacunga. And I feel like that was kind of the nail in the coffin of what we could do while we were still in Ecuador. Our best option was me basically taking out a leg of our trip and flying all the way back to Texas, hoping that all the camera gear delivered in time. She doesn't want to say bye. 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 I'll see you in a couple days. Bye. So I am currently flying back from South America to Texas to pick up new camera gear. But after we got robbed, we couldn't just like continue this trip in South America. We have some amazing things planned. And without gear, it's gonna be really challenging to like get the most out of what we had planned. So in the next three days, I'm gonna fly from Lima back to Austin, back to Lima, hopefully with a completely fresh new set of camera gear that I had to pay for in time before insurance is even going to pay out for the theft that happened in Ecuador. So I have no idea if I'm gonna get this money back. It's literally just uh, what we have to do right now. But that I left LA in South America and yeah, I made it over the auto pad. All right, so I am back in Austin. Right here is all the new camera gear, but it's also like, Pretty painful realization that this is what I had to come to. It's gonna be worth it though, and uh, it's gonna believe that. I stayed in Lima just waiting for Blake. I continued on our trip. I went to Juaraz and did a hike by myself, and I haven't solo traveled in so long. I feel like long. it's like that was four months ago, and that was the last time that we were like apart. He came back with a whole new camera, 
the exact same setup too. This is the first time that we're really talking about it, like not even to our parents or our friends. Like obviously they know what happened, but probably not in uh, this much detail that we're saying right now. I feel like it's still super painful to think about. It wasn't just like talking about this specific experience that like really had a lasting effect on us. Like even creating YouTube videos was like, it was just like this mental block. Like I couldn't get past it. And that's why there was like a huge gap in time between when we posted our last video and then just a couple weeks ago when we started posting consistently again. And we're still trying to get money back for this like crazy loss that happened. Yeah, that's kind of where we are right now. And like for our future, like what does our future look like with YouTube and everything? I think this event really encouraged us to like keep finding ways to make money as digital nomads as we travel. I think like following our passions and like really like doubling down, tripling down on what it is we want to do in this world. Over the past couple of months, we haven't been posting, but we've still been traveling and we've still been like filming our adventures and like we're like really excited to share them again. Like we want to share like our successes and our failures. Like they're just as important and hopefully just as relatable because um, we would never want this to happen to anybody. Yeah. We have some things that we learned so that this never happens to you. I think every single piece of equipment we have now has an air tag. Before this, like I had an air tag in my bag, in the suitcase, but now there's one in the drone. There's one directly connected to the camera. There's one in our tripod bag. We bought these little baby locks that we put them on like the zippers of our backpacks. The locks really do a great job of like taking away those small little opportunities when the bag is next to you on a bus. There's like almost no chance that they get it. The opportunity is gone. We also have like made sure that the insurance is gonna cover everything. I think it just really like woke us up to be like, if you care about it, insure it. Put your bag on your lap. I don't care if it's heavy or uncomfortable, please do that one thing. You might think that you're secure and that your things are secure just like I thought that my camera was safe because it was inside my bag. People, if they want to steal from you, they know and they're sly enough, like they're gonna get it. If you're definitely like uncomfortable with more public transport, there are always options for you to use private transportation. And while it's more expensive, you might just have a better like peace of mind and it might be worth it. We actually started like posting on TikTok and Instagram about this experience and people told us like, why didn't you have insurance? Well, we had insurance and sometimes that insurance doesn't cover what you think it would. Some people asked us, why didn't the cops help? Well, you have to understand that like, they probably helped us more than they even needed to. And I'm thankful that they did. Like they don't have to help you. And when you're in other countries, you have to like recognize that. We truly believe that like we take a lot of risks by traveling. But at the end of the day, like you just have to understand like part of life is risk and that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. And we shouldn't put people down, put countries down or put anybody down really for having these types of experiences. Yeah, and Ecuador is a gorgeous country and yeah. deserves to be visited no matter like if this happened to us there or not. And if you made it this far, we really appreciate you hearing our stories. We hope that it explains the so many questions on our reel and TikTok. And there are so many people on there that this also happened to them. And I hope that you don't feel alone. When you travel, you, you take risks and it happens. And we're, we're here with you. Also, like, please let us know in the comments if you have any questions, if there's anything about this experience that we didn't talk about that you wanna know about. But if you're looking just to like say some mean things in a comment, like we're not gonna appreciate it. So like, just keep it to yourself if you have negative things to say. The next week we'll be back making different mistakes, but this time while we're hiking to Machu Picchu. So if you wanna watch that video, please subscribe and we'll see, we'll see you, you next time, time on, on today's, today's adventure. adventure. Bye bye.